Welcome to Moxie Bets presented by Caesar Sportsbook. I'm your host, Katie Mox, and coming up on today's show, week one is officially in the books. But before we can officially move on to week two, what are some of the biggest overreactions? We'll tell you ours. Plus, we'll give you our best and worst week one performances, and we'll preview tomorrow night's matchup between the Chargers and the Chiefs. We'll give you our picks on those. But first, let's welcome in Kenny Betts Big. Kenny, happy Wednesday. How's it going? Not too bad. Happy belated birthday, by the way, you know, for the viewers at home. Drop some happy yeah. birthdays for Katie in the comments. <laughs> Did yes. you do anything exciting? I went, well, I went out on Saturday. I went to Benihana, uh, which is funny because I live in New York City with all the greatest restaurants in the world. But growing up in suburbia, I went to Benihana, you know, or some kind of teppanyaki every year for our birthday. And I was like, that's just kind of what I want to do. So I did that on Saturday, went out with some girlfriends. And then last night, I just caught up on that House of the Dragon, which you know, it was a doozy. It was definitely, it was a good episode. Season's off to a banger. Uh, I'm just happy Game of Thrones is back. And you can't knock hibachi because let's be real. There's, when it comes down to it, there's nothing better than a little hibachi. There is nothing better. I totally agree. Okay. So let's get into our Mox thought of the day. Let's talk week one overreactions. My biggest overreaction from the public is Geno Smith. People are saying Geno Smith is better than Russell Wilson or that Russell Wilson has been holding back Geno Smith this whole time. And that is ridiculous. Yes, he had some really good moments. I'm not going to take it away from him. He had some pretty good throws there. But we've seen glimmers of good plays from him before. The problem is consistency. And even if he said, you know, he didn't write back when all these people were writing him off, just give it time, people. Geno Smith and the Seahawks are not going to be good this year. You he heard it here first. I'm not sold on him. And uh, I think it was just a complete overreaction. What's uh, what's your take on that? And also, what's your biggest overreaction, Kenny? So, all right, I'll, I'll agree. I Even though Gino made me a lot of money on Monday night, um, you're right. The, his <laughs> problem is the consistency. Everyone in the NFL is super talented, right? They're in the NFL for a reason. So they all have the ability to come in there and light it up for a game or two. But what separates the elite players from guys like Geno Smith is, like you said, consistency. So over the course of a season, I don't expect much from Geno Smith. But I do think, especially after seeing week one, there's a chance Russell Wilson may be a little overrated. Um, oh. You know, he had that elite defense that carried him in the in the beginning of his career. He had Marshawn mm -hmm. Lynch. Um, and in the last few seasons, when it when the the whole focus became let Russ cook, the Seahawks have done nothing. Um, so, you know, I'm curious to see how it plays out in Denver. He may be a little overrated, but my week one overreaction is the Bills. Well, first of all, wait, let me respond. Let me respond to your Russell Wilson thing. I don't know that the whole let Russ cook thing. First of all, he was injured last year, so he had that going for him. Plus, like Pete Carroll with his, like, archaic scheme. It was more of a run-first offense. I don't think it really lent itself well to Russell Wilson. And with the way that Russell Wilson played against the, the Seahawks, first of all, it was kind of screwed up at the NFL to give him that game week one. He probably doesn't even know who he's throwing to because he's used to playing in that building for the other team. On top of that, it's not his fault that, that his, uh, his uh, uh, running backs dropped both of their touchdowns in the end zone. I feel like that should have been a blow up by the Broncos and so many things worked against them. I, don't, I wouldn't blame Russell Wilson for that, but I hear what you're saying. Yeah, the, the two goal line fumbles, of course, sh killed the Broncos, but they were playing the Seahawks who, you know, you, me and everyone else in the world thought were going to be probably the worst, if not, you know, the second worst team in the league this year after losing Russell Wilson. And, you know, they came out and I think they surprised a lot of people. They definitely did. But I'm but there's if if they really they didn't who they didn't surprise is the books, because if they did, then they wouldn't be 10 point underdogs versus the Niners with the way that the Niners played last week. So clearly Vegas still does not believe in the Seahawks. But that's neither here nor there. What's your biggest overreaction to week one? The Bills. Um, now, oh. I, yeah, I, I'll say I the Bills did look very good. They did look mm -hmm. good, better than I thought they were going to. But I think it was more of a product of the Rams just looked really, really bad. Um, I think you can agree with that, right? Well, I'm I'm high on the Bills, but I will agree that the Rams look really bad. And it was probably my favorite season opener of my life to watch them. Yeah, you know, I, I have to give a shout out. I forget his name, but the the one the one follower I was going back and forth in the comments about the uh, Rams Bills <laughs> game. I said I would give him a shout out on the show if he was right. He was right. Egg on my face. Oh. The Rams look terrible. 
Um, but yeah, I think just a, uh, a big overreaction, right? And the NFL is big in week to week, becoming prisoner of the moment where you see a team on Sunday or Monday, they come out, they look great, they throttle their opponent. And then the next week, the line is inflated and everyone is high on that team again. Uh, going back to 1995, there's only been three times where the preseason Super Bowl favorite has actually gone on to win the Super Bowl. Um, mm. So, you know, I, long term, I don't think the Bills are going to be that elite team we saw week one. So I think a little overreaction to them. I will say Kenny has not been high on the Bills for as long as I've known him. I remember you thought that Josh <laughs> Allen wasn't going to be great last year. Like there's something with the Bills that just does not sit right with you. But we'll see. I'm high on the Bills, but uh, I understand what you're saying there. So let's move on. All right, people, we're brought to you by Caesars Sportsbook, the greatest sports betting app of all time. See, it's not just about the daily promos, odd boosts, or the hundreds of ways to wager. It's about the immortal words of Caesar himself. You bet you get with Caesars Rewards. Every bet you place on the app, no matter the outcome, earns towards exclusive perks at Caesars Rewards destinations everywhere. Hotel stays, concert tickets, bonuses, and more. Download the Caesars Sportsbook app, become a Caesars Rewards member today and get more with every wager. Must be 21 or older to gamble. Gambling problem? Call or text 1-800-522-4700. Week one is in the book, so let's take a look at our top five teams after week one. I like the Bills, the Ravens, the Vikings, the Chargers, and the Chiefs. Kenny, you like the Buccaneers. Surprise, surprise. The Bills, the Chiefs, the Vikings, and the Ravens. Interesting because you said that the the bills were overrated a little bit, but then you have them here at number two. Yeah. Well, I said they did look good. They surprised me a little <laughs> bit, but, but when you turn on any sports center or you go on any social media, all everyone was talking about is how good the bills looked. I have a friend who is, he's been putting in parlays, crazy parlays. And every wow. last leg is the bills to win the super bowl. Um, wow. Everyone is super high on that bills bandwagon. And we all know what happens when that's the case. You know, Vegas usually cleans up and they're building bigger casinos at the end of the year. So, uh, yeah, I think the Bills, you have to respect what they did. They came in, yeah. went into oh, L.A. God. and they embarrassed the Rams. So, yeah, rightfully so, I have to put them at number two. Long over the course of the season, though, I think that will kind of fade and the Bills will, you know, still be a top five, top seven team in the league. But I don't think they're where people think they are. Okay, so let's go ahead and break down these week two matchups for the five teams, top five teams that we think are going to do well. But before we do that, let's do a little recap of week one. So favorites went eight and eight against the spread. Home teams went nine and seven against the spread. The over and under went 11 and five. Home teams, six, nine and one straight up. That is the worst week one since 2006. It was also very low scoring. Unders went 11 and five. The average total was 46, but the average result was 42. Average result, average result for week two is about 45.8. That's, that's as of Tuesday morning. And um, very interesting is the Packers, the Broncos, the Rams, and the 49ers could all close as double digits favorites in week two after losing their season opener. This would be the first time that that's happened since 1985. I don't know that they're going to close as 10-point favorites, but that's an interesting thing. So let's first talk about the Buccaneers at the Saints. Bucks are minus three, total 44. It's going to be at the Superdome. Opening lines, Tampa Bay minus four, total 46 and a half. Tampa Bay 1-0 straight up and against the spread. They hit the under in their first game. New Orleans also 1-0 straight up, 0-1 against the spread, and they're over hit. So what do you think, Kenny? I'm going to go with the Bucs here. Typically, I'm not a big favorites better, but the Buccaneers defense looked really, really good uh, You know, against the Cowboys. Cowboys were actually the only team in week one to not record a touchdown. Um, sorry, Dallas fans. But yeah, I, I, think, <laughs> I, I think the Buccaneers defense looked really good. Um, the offense didn't look as good, but... Tom Brady missed all of training camp. I think, you know, he's got new pieces to get acclimated with. Julio Jones looked really good. So I think as the season goes on, that offense is just going to start clicking uh, and firing on all cylinders. So, yeah, I like the Bucks there at minus three. I know the Saints typically play them pretty competitively in the regular season, but typically. no more Sean Payton. So uh, I'd be curious to see how they're able to game plan. Like they had trouble with the Falcons. Imagine what that Buccaneers defense is going to do to them. 
So I'm going to take the Saints money line on this one. It's plus 130. Now, the last time I actually went to a game, it was Halloween last year. I went to the Bucks versus the Saints, and I took Tom Brady, and uh, it was an awful game to be on the Bucks or to be backing Tom Brady. Head to head, Tom Brady, zero and four. I know you said they typically play, play well. Tom Brady is zero and four in regular season versus the Saints since joining the Bucks. He's also zero and four against the spread. Both of those are tied for his longest losing streaks versus any team in his career. His passer rating drops down to 71 and a half. His touchdown to interception ratio is six to eight. Total sacks, 13. It is his worst against any team. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I would be remiss not to take the Saints in this matchup. All right, let's move on. Titans and Bills. This is a minus 10. This total at 49 and a half. Opening line, Buffalo seven and a half. That's been bet up to 10. And then the total was 52. That's been bet down to 49 and a half. Tennessee, zero and one straight up and against the spread. They hit the under. Buffalo, one and oh, one and oh, both straight up and against the spread. And they also hit the under. What do you think of this matchup, Kenny? This is a tough one. Um, you know, we have the Titans coming off that epic collapse against the Giants where they lost uh, that two yeah, t terrible, right? First, tale of two halves. Uh, the Titans looked yeah. like they were going to run away with that one. And then Saquon Barkley went absolutely crazy in the second half. Um, so it's it's a weird spot because the Titans coming off that bad loss to a bad team, I think they'll come into this game, one, hungry. You don't want to start the season 0-2. But the Bills looked pretty good. Um, last year, what their Achilles heel was, they couldn't stop the run. Uh, I don't know if you remember the Bills and the Titans played on a Monday night. Derrick Henry ran absolutely wild in that game, ran the ball all down the Bills' throat. The Bills' defense actually looked pretty formidable against the run against the L.A. Rams. So I'm curious to see how that holds up. You're get, If you take the minus 10 here, though, you're taking a bad line. It opened up at, what would you say, 7 yeah. in the hook? Yep. Yeah, so, I mean, now you're getting a minus 10. That's just a bad line. I would stay away from it personally. But if, you know, if a forced bet, I would probably lean Titans here with the plus 10. I would agree, which is why I'm taking the Bills in the second half spread, minus four and a half. This is at minus 105 on Caesar Sportsbook. Laying double-digit spreads in week two is a biz big ask, and I do feel like the Titans' loss to the Giants was more of a fluke than the G-men actually being good. I think it was a great call by Dable, of course, to go for two there at the end. Saquon looked amazing. It's going to be interesting to see him up against Derrick Henry and kind of who the better back is going to be there. Bills are 5-2-2 two, and two as double-digit favorites, but it's worth noting that the Bills have lost five straight home Home games on Monday night football. The last home win for Monday night was September 26th of 1994 versus the Broncos. Allen's two and two on Monday night. So I'm just going to go with the second half spread here because if we look at last week, it was a little bit lopsided. The Bills were tied 10-10 going into the half, then they absolutely exploded in the fourth quarter, and the Titans were up 13-0 before they absolutely collapsed against the uh, the Giants there. And I just feel like Allen comes alive in the second half, so I'm going to look for them to do that again. I'm taking them second half spread minus the four and a half. All right, let's move on to Vikings at Eagles. Eagles favored minus two, total at 49 and a half. This is going to be in Philadelphia, opening line two and a half, and the total was 48. So this has stayed pretty much the same, not too much of a change there. Minnesota 1-0 and straight up and against the spread. They hit the under in their game. Philadelphia also 1-0 and straight up, 0-1 and against the spread, and they hit the over. What do you think of this matchup? I will say head-to-head, -head, this is the first meeting since 2019. Both of these teams are seeking their first 2-0 and start since 2016. So just based off that line, right, everyone has to be wondering, how are the Eagles favorites in this spot? The Vikings, yes. Uh, yes. New, new coach, offensive guru, the Vikings were clicking on all cylinders. Justin Jefferson started the season off doing exactly what he said he was going to do, be the best wide receiver in the league. Um, yeah. So looking at this line, this is like a, a head scratcher. And you know what I like to do in this situation. You just fade the <laughs> obvious bets here. So I'm gonna yeah. I would take the Eagles here on the money line. Um, I think this is a spot where a lot of casual betters are going to look, see that the Vikings just put the beat down on Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers, and they're gonna say, Oh wow, I'm getting the Vikings at plus money here, a, a nice price, and they're gonna just bet the Vikings here. So Philly at home, the offense looked very good. Um, you know, um, What's his AJ Brown looked great yep. with with Jalen Hurts, right? So that offense, a lot of expectations this year. Um, the defense didn't play their best game, but I think they'll be up for the task uh, on Sunday versus the Minnesota Vikings. So we should see a better performance from the defensive side of the ball from Philadelphia as well. 
I agree with you. I'm going to take the Vikings. I'm going to take the points with the Vikings on this one. I feel like this game is going to be much more about offense than defense. Both of these teams really need to score. The Eagles allowed the Lions of all teams to get back within striking distance. You're not going to be able to do that with this Vikings team. So I'm going to take the points for the Vikes to keep this close, but it's it's a tough one. So I you know I like the Eagles money line. It's only at minus one thirty five, but I don't know. I kind of I kind of like the Vikings in this one, so I'm going to give them plus two. There's also the Kansas yeah. City Chiefs versus the Chargers, which we're going to get into a little bit later. What were you going to say? I was going to say that's one of those spots too where you really have to keep an eye on where the handle is for that game. If that's a spot where all the money is on the Eagles, I wouldn't feel terrible taking the Vikings there with the plus two or even on the yeah. money line. But if yeah. Come Sunday, everyone is betting the Vikings there and the line stays at two or let's say the Eagles even creep up to like a minus three, even though all the money's on the Vikings. That's just the sports books taking a stand there and you have to take the Eagles at that point. I agree with you. All right, let's move on to the Dolphins at the Ravens. Uh, they are favored. Ravens minus three and a half. Total 44 and a half. This is going to be in Baltimore. Opening lines, Baltimore three and a half. Total 46. So the total's been bet up a little bit, but it's pretty much stayed the same in terms of the spread. Miami one and oh straight up and against the spread. They hit the under in week one. Baltimore, of course, one straight up also against the spread and also hit the under. So some similarities there. What do you think of this one? It's a tough one. Again, I'm typically not a favorites better. Um, so this is a tough game for me because I'm very high on the Ravens. I'm very high on Lamar yep. Jackson. He looked great yep. week one. And the Dolphins looked very good too against my Patriots. Uh, tough game to watch for me on the other side of that one. But I will say, speaking of overreactions, let's not overreact to the, that loss of the Patriots. Those adjustments will be made and they will look a lot better next week. I'm not saying they're going to win you know, their next game, but, uh, but they're not going to look like that. I, d- I don't believe that the Dolphins are that great. No, yeah. I, I think there's going to be a lot of overhype on the Dolphins. So this is a weird line because typically I don't like to lay the points. But if I was going to bet this game, I would take the Baltimore Ravens there. Um, I think the Dolphins got helped out by Mac Jones a couple times in that game. Uh, pick in their, I, they, I don't think they were in the red zone, but they were on like the 25 through the interception, uh, the fumble scoop score for the touchdown. So the Dolphins, if anything, were helped out by the Patriots in that spot. Um, yes. I, I like the Ravens here, honestly. Yep, I'm going to agree with you. I'll take the Ravens minus a three and a half. That's the lean. It's not necessarily what I'm going to take. And I just told you, I'm not overreacting to the Dolphins win over the Patriots. For me, the jury is still out in Miami. Finns did upset the Ravens 22 to 10 as eight and a half point home underdogs last season. It was the fewest points in any start of Lamar Jackson's career, but he's playing for big money now. This is a contract year for him after turning down, I think it was what, $250 million. So I'm not going to bet against him in this spot. Baltimore is the more dominant team. They're playing at home. I feel good about them being able to win by more than a field goal imagine turning down 250 million dollars you know what they say bet on yourself that is betting on yourself and here's the thing i hope it works out for him because i do think that he's talented however when you look at deshaun watson's contract that that has so many factors in it because they knew he wasn't going to be able to play this year and they wanted to get him like that's not a normal thing and that's not something that i think the players should necessarily bank on so i don't know that he's ever going to get that much guaranteed i don't know if other teams would do that but i just Really, really hope that he doesn't get seriously injured this year. And with a mobile quarterback like that, he's putting himself at a very high risk. So I hope it works out for him. And it's the definition of betting on yourself, but it's scary. Yeah, I mean, we we saw it work out for Aaron Judge this year, right? He was offered yes. a huge contract by the Yankees and turned it different, down. different, though. It is. Yeah, you're right. Not, you're not getting injured, injured like Lamar Jackson could get injured. But yes, I agree with you. No, yeah, the uh, the, the injury risk is definitely much higher in football. <laughs> Much, much higher in football. Okay. All right. We're going to get at Chargers and Chiefs in Capper's Corner next. However, those are our top fives. How about the worst of the week? Who do you think was the worst team in the NFL or, you know, the biggest underreaction, I guess you can say is? It's got to be the Jets. Um, And for a couple of reasons here. (laughs) Obviously, they looked terrible against the Ravens. The defense, you know, didn't, didn't play like everyone thought they were going to. Sauce Gardner looked good. He wasn't terrible. But another, like, one bone that I have to pick here is why is Joe Flacco out there, right? They have Mike <sighs> – like, why is Mike White not playing? We saw Mike they, White come they, in last I, year. He yeah. lit it up. And Zach Wilson goes down. You know, I was listening to The Fan, which is the local New York, New Jersey, tri-state area radio show, and th- they were saying the same thing. 
I think it's the Jets are afraid that Mike White, there's a chance he's better than Zach Wilson. They don't want that. Mike White came in last year, filled in admirably, lit it up. I don't know if you remember those tickets where, right? The one guy bet a thousand bucks from to lead the league, lead the league in that week, right? And he came in and balled out. Mike White, getting people paid. Um, yeah, so the Jets for a couple of reasons, like, why aren't you putting the young guy out there seeing what he seeing what he can do for you, right? Maybe you have something there that you don't even know. Instead, you throw the dinosaur Joe Flacco out there against his old team that knows all his tendencies, and he looked terrible. Um, so it, it has to be the Jets, because like I've we've, we've talked about it a few times on this show, the Jets, the Knicks, the Mets before Steve Cohen, uh, they're all the same franchise where they just can't get out of their own way. They constantly screw things up and they make terrible decisions. They have a great draft this year. Doesn't mean anything. They're the Jets. They're going to stink. Yeah. I mean, I agree with you in the sense that the Jets are the worst team probably in the NFL. And I do believe that the the fans were chanting to put Mike White in at some point uh, during that game. So I think everyone in New York agrees with you about putting Mike White in. I'm going to go with the Cowboys as the worst week one, just because there were such high expectations for them. And I do realize that Dak Prescott got injured, but that wasn't until like the very end of the uh, fourth quarter there. They were the only team in week one not to score a touchdown. Even the Jets scored a touchdown. So for me, it's it's the Cowboys. They are they had the worst week one, and it's only going to get worse for them. Yeah, no, definitely. Dak getting hurt, if anything, is a blessing for them because they weren't going to do much with Dak there. At least this takes a little bit of pressure off. Like, oh, we stink because Dak got hurt, you know? Right. Um, it's a good excuse. Yeah, exactly. And, and this is why people have to listen to the show. You and I have been on <laughs> record multiple times saying the yes. Cowboys are going to take a huge step back. Keeping Zeke over Amari Cooper, your quarterback's number one target, terrible, terrible move. Another one by Jerry Jones. And this is why the Cowboys stink. That's why the Cowboys stink. Okay, let's move on to Capper's Corner, where Kenny and I will give you our best bets for the Thursday night football game, the Chargers at the Chiefs. Very, very big divisional game. Chiefs are favored, minus four, total 54 and a half. Opening lines, KC opened at three, total was 52 and a half. So this has been bumped up, favoring the Chiefs and a little bit lower in terms of the total. LA 1-0 straight up against the spread. They hit the under in their first game. KC, same thing, except for they hit the over. Kenny, when you talk about the side or the spread, what do you like here? I love the under in this game. As crazy as that mm. sounds, because we have Herbert versus Mahomes. Yeah. Um, Setting setting up for a classic shootout, but yep. typically in Thursday night games when the total opens at fifty three or higher, the under hits at like a remarkable rate. So anytime oh. they put that line out for Thursday, if I see the totals fifty three points or higher, I just bet it. I don't care what teams are playing; it doesn't matter. I'm taking it because it hits at an over seventy percent clip. If you take that every time, you're making money at the end of the season. So I'm going to go under here. I think the Chargers defense has a lot to prove. They have a lot of pieces. Khalil Mack looked great week one, three sacks. Derwin James, absolute stud of a player, ball hawk in the back end of that defense. So I think the Chargers defense is going to come out with a lot to prove, try and slow down Patrick Mahomes. We saw the Chiefs week one, Mahomes threw the ball all over the field, five touchdowns. Uh, I think a lot of people are expecting, you know, fireworks in this game. So yeah, I like the under here a lot. I like the under, and I think I would definitely lean there. I'm willing to give the Chargers the four points here because I really am, after what I saw versus the Raiders, and I do think that for sure Mahomes and the um, and the Chiefs looked great against Arizona, but I don't think Arizona necessarily played that well. So this is going to be the fourth matchup between Herbert and Mahomes. Each of the first three were decided by a game-winning score in the final minute of regulation or in overtime, so it's no big surprise here that the spread is under a touchdown. Both Mahomes and Herbert have both put up very impressive numbers. Eight of the 15 touchdown passes they've combined for have come in the fourth quarter and are overtime, so you might want to look at like the second half bets or maybe even the fourth quarter. Herbert, He's 2-0 and at Arrowhead, and the Chargers defense is scary. Like you said, they sacked Derek Carr six times, so I guess one of those was Adams on one of those trick plays, three of those from Khalil Mack alone. The Chiefs have fixed their O-line to a certain extent. Mahomes was not sacked at all last weekend. I think that the Chargers can pull off the upset again at Arrowhead, but I feel confident, more confident, rather, giving them the four points. Yeah, it's I, I would probably normally agree with you there that I like the Chargers as well, especially primetime games. Usually the underdogs are the better play. But there's just been so much hype around the Chiefs 
taking a step back and every team yeah. in that division getting significantly better. And Patrick Mahomes is still him. He is Patrick Mahomes. Oh, uh, we saw yes. week one, five touchdowns. So the only thing that scares me about taking the Chargers there is Patrick Mahomes could come in, big chip on his shoulder. You're like, hey, yeah. don't forget about me here and just light it up. Yep. So th that's the only reason I'm not going to take the Chargers in that spot. But normally I would agree with you and take the Chargers. Okay, so let's see who's going to – this is always a fun one for a little bit of a sprinkle. The first touchdown score, you got Eckler leading it at plus 410. Then it goes Kelsey and Juju and Clyde Edwards, Clyde Edwards Hilaire and then Mike Williams at plus 700. I mean, obviously this is like a – this is a crapshoot, but who, who do you like? Who do, who, what odds do you like here? Just, just for the value and the odds that we're getting – Mike Williams at plus 700. He had nine touchdowns last year from Herbert. Um, he's a, a big wide receiver. So in the red zone, he is the target. So at plus 700, I, I like those odds a lot for a sprinkle. You know, don't go crazy. Don't put your mortgage on it. Just a, little, a couple bucks, you know, a little pizza money and see if you can get paid. I'm going to go with Travis Kelsey on this one just because, you know, he got into the end zone versus Arizona. He's a trusted target. He's a big body. I feel like he gets it done more than he doesn't. I know you and I are kind of high on him in terms of like maybe having the most receptions or touchdowns for the Chiefs this year. So might as well go with him. Were you surprised at all how good Juju Smith looked in the, on the Chiefs? I was a little surprised. Uh, no. He looked really good and not really. So you will see as we move on to this, I picked Juju for quite a few things. Like an anytime <laughs> touchdown score. <laughs> in fact, I like Juju. He was limited in practice on Monday. He was a full participant on Tuesday. So fantasy owners don't get so freaked out. He recorded six interceptions, 79 yards, and eight targets while playing 46 of the Chiefs, 70 snaps on offense. So I like him as an anytime touchdown score. Who do you like? Yeah, I, I have Juju as one of my options. Juju and Mike Williams, obviously, they're both plus money. Um, we didn't, Juju didn't get into the end zone week one. So I think, you know, he, he looked like a great, he's going to be a target of Mahomes all season long. Uh, I haven't seen him on TikTok too much. So I think maybe he's, <laughs> it was a Steelers little, thing. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Um, so maybe now he's focused on football. He realizes, I think he's another guy who bet on himself. He took the one year deal to go play yep. in Kansas city. So he finally is back with an elite quarterback. You know, he's been kind of tied to Big Ben the last few years. So, yeah, I think we could see Juju have a breakout year and at plus money for an anytime touchdown. I like it. Well, you know, you talk about the one-year deal. The Chiefs did amend his contract with double – they doubled it, actually, per game for his roster bonuses. He went from 30000 to 60000 He's now eligible to earn $510,000 per game in 2022. So, uh, you know, they, they believe in him. They've incentivized him. So I like that as well. Let's talk about the Chiefs' total passing touchdowns. Mahomes, two and a half over under. Herbert, one and a half. So they're given – they're giving Mahomes the edge here in terms of, even though Justin Herbert has won twice in Arrowhead, they're still saying that Patrick Mahomes gets more passing touchdowns. What do you think? I'm going to say if I was going to go just touchdowns, I might, I might actually go Herbert. Um, I, I think yeah. Herbert will, because what, what are, so are you saying who's going to have more or who's going to hit their prop? Well, it's over, it's over under. So Patrick Mahomes at two and a half over is minus one Oh six under minus minus one twenty nine. And for Herbert, he's at one and a half. And then to hit that it's minus two thirty four. which I don't know why you just want to put that up to two and a half and the under is plus one sixty five. There's no way that Herbert gets under one and a half passing touchdowns, but it's, it's good, you know, good odds plus one sixty five. I will just from a betting, a, like a professional better standpoint, looking at that, I feel like the reason they set it at that one and a half is they know every, not everyone, but a lot of people are going to look at that and say, Justin Herbert, yeah. two touchdowns. Come on, give me that easy money. Throw it in parlays yep. and yep. juice that high. It seems a little sketchy. The NFL, you're right, is just known. The sketchy stuff always happens. So looking <laughs> at that, I, I'm going to go Mahomes now. Now I got to go Mahomes just yeah. because there's a chance. Maybe we just see one touchdown from Herbert. I agree with you 100%. When looking at these odds for Mahomes to go over, it's at minus 106. I think that's probably the best value here because I, I wouldn't take Herbert to take the under, even if it's at plus 165. And you already touched on it. Mahomes is on a mission right now to prove that he doesn't need Tyreek Hill. He threw for five passing touchdowns versus Arizona. He does average slightly under this mark in his career at 244, but at minus 106, I'm going to go with it as well. 
All right, moving on. We're going to talk about the total passing yards now for Mahomes and Herbert. Mahomes, he's at uh, 306 and a half. To go over that, it's at plus 100. To go under, it's at minus 137. Herbert over 283 and a half. For that to go over, minus 117. And that's the same odds for him to go under. What do you think? I'm going to go Mahomes under. 306 is a just a big number to say you're yeah. going to go out there, throw 300 yards in a game. Just a, it's a high. It's inflated. Um, I think, again, like I, we, we talked about it early, NFL's constant prisoner of the moment, one week to the next. What happened the week before has n- absolutely nothing to do with what's going to happen this week. He was playing a tr- sure. uh, Cardinals team that's banged up, missing key players on defense. Yep. Yep. Going now up against a Chargers team that has an elite defense. Um, so I, I'm going to go Mahomes under there. 306 is high. So I like that one. I'm going to go Justin Herbert over on this one. And I know you said we can't really compare to week ones. But if we do look at those week ones, Mahomes had 360 passing yards. Herbert had 279. Herbert averaged nearly 300 passing yards per game last season. And like I'm like I mentioned previously, Herbert 2-0 and at Arrowhead. He has 583 passing yards, seven touchdowns, and no interceptions at Arrowhead. So at, at, at 283, let's go all day. Total receiving yards. Kelsey, 78 and a half. And then you've got Juju Smith-Schuster, 57 and a half. You've got McKinnon at 16 and a half. Eckler, 36 and a half. Who do you like to go over their total receiving yards? So I'm going to go Travis Kelsey over receiving yards here. Um, you know, week one, he looked great. No cheetah. I, we talked about it before how it was just going to open up a ton of opportunities for Travis Kelsey to get the ball thrown at him. Um, I even sprinkled him to lead the league in receiving yards this year. So week one, he got us off to a good start. Hoping he can uh, keep that trend going. I like that. I'm going to go Juju again on this one. I talked about how he's heavily incentivized now. He had 79 yards against Arizona. Of course, that's going to decrease against this Chargers defense because they're so good, but I still think he can get over 57 and a half. So I'll go Juju on this one. And uh, let's see, that is over minus 131. Not terrible odds. No, not bad at all. All right. Now for the fun one. Let's take a look at some of the odd boosts that Caesar Sportsbook has for this game. You can take Patrick Mahomes or Justin Herbert to score a rushing touchdown. That's a plus 170. You can take the Chargers to win and Austin Eckler over 99 and a half rushing and receiving yards. That's at plus 300. You have Kelsey and uh, Hardman each over five and a half receptions. That's at plus 440. Mike Williams and Gerald Ever to score a touchdown, plus 750. And then Juju Smith, Schuster, first touchdown scorer versus the Chargers at plus 1,000. I'll tell you right now. I'm going to go with, oh, I wanted to go with Juju. I wanted to go Juju at plus 1,000, but I think I'm going to go with Mahomes and Herbert to score a rushing touchdown because I can see both of them just getting over the goal line uh, when they need to, when it's close. But I kind of want to sprinkle a little bit on the 1,000 for Juju since I'm so high on him in this game. <laughs> yeah, well, why not sprinkle, right? A plus 1,000, you hit one of one of those every couple of weeks, you're you're doing well at the end of the season. Every couple but, weeks. Uh, what a dream yeah. that would be to hit a plus 1,000 every couple of weeks. <laughs> a pipe well, dream. You, you, you you won't know unless you try, Katie. So That's sprinkle, true. sprinkle, you can't, you and can't uh, unless you play. next week we'll talk and we'll see how it went. I, okay, I'll do I, it. I have to agree with you here, though. Um, I think out of those options, the best one is Mahomes and Herbert to one of them to score a rushing touchdown. You know, Mahomes is sneaky uh, on the run game. You know, I think a lot of people forget that he can actually kind of scamper around and you know move around and get to pick up some yards. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him run one in at all. All right. Well, we're in agreement there. Okay. Big game coming up. Can't wait to see which one of our bets hit here. Thank you so much, Kenny. This has been Moxie Bets presented by Caesar Sportsbook. Don't forget to follow us on social at Moxie Bets on Twitter and Instagram. We'll see you Friday.